What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Last for Athletes. My name is Chad, and today we have the final mock draft before uh, the day when I'm uploading this. Not when I'm recording it. I am recording early. I won't lie. Um, the day I'm uploading this is either do I upload this tomorrow? Oops, I just recorded the show, the recording day, or do I upload this on day of? We will see. Uh, you you know the answer by now, awkwardly enough. Um, but anyways. We are in the final stretch for the NFL draft. I'm super excited. There's a lot to talk about that we're going to talk about some potential things. I am going to make this draft a little funky because last year I didn't think there was going to be that much trades. Then we had some crazy trades. Um, this year, I think we're going to probably, I don't know, probably see some crazy trades. I do expect to maybe some like last year um so i'm going to throw in some hypotheticals and we'll talk about it there but other than that let's get started we'll let you guys hang in around probably i'm not trying to get another 40 minute video like i always do probably a little faster so i'll go straight to the point with some of these picks caleb williams obviously caleb williams they kind of made a great offense for caleb williams um and by not great i do mean like for a number one pick coming in because we have everyone talks about how the, the, but he's going to the worst situation. He's going to the Bears. This is a horrible situation for him. Well, crazy enough, you know, going to um, the Bears, the Bears weren't the worst team this year. They weren't the n number one worst team. They're the ninth worst team. You can see their pick at nine. So for a team like that and then making trades to get weapons, obviously they have some ideas for Caleb Williams. And I trust the Bears to probably do a decent job of Caleb Williams. And I trust Caleb Williams to make himself um, – one of the better quarterbacks in this league. Number two is where everything goes crazy. No one knows after number two, a hundred percent what's going to happen. And for me, I'm going to go general consensus because I'm not an analyst. I'm not somebody that's going to say that I know everything. I do look at tapes a, 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 few, a few times. I do look at this. I'm not somebody, I'm listening to rumors. I'm not going to be someone that's going to say, this is what it's going to be and this is 100% in. If they do this, it's a wrong decision. I'm not an NFL analyst and anyone on YouTube that maybe doesn't do um, football content enough, doesn't know 100% what scouts or other people are thinking. So this is what I'm choosing and just off of kind of general consensus, but also a little bit of preference. Jaden Daniels. I'm going to go Jaden Daniels, even though I think Drake May could be a better pick here. But I think that with the Cliff uh, Kingsbury offense, they're going to want a running style quarterback. They're also going to have Marcus Mariota that can also teach Jaden Daniels. I do think that this is a good pick overall, and this is something that's going to help Jaden Daniels for the future. Up next at three, um, you could see trades from here on out. Number two that the Washington Commanders said they're sticking with number two. Could see trades here on out, but... Um, number three, even though they've talked to J.J. McCarthy, I'm still going to go Drake May. They've talked about that. They'd rather stay with getting a quarterback, with getting whatever. Um, that is the pick to go for them in that it makes the most sense. Yes, they're doing a rebuild, but to start a rebuild, you need to get the quarterback to know the system so you don't throw in a quarterback to just get a new into a, a or reset system. Um, number four with the Cardinals, another trade position. But they, the offers that they've probably been getting and probably whatever does not make sense for him to uh, pass up a Marvin Harrison Jr. I think he is a generational prospect. I know that term gets thrown around a lot. But he is someone that is just the prospect itself. Um, somebody that we're not seeing anybody like this since maybe Jamar Chase um, get selected up here. And honestly, if there was a team that knew wide receiver up here, they could have moved up. And, or Marvin Harrison could have moved up and go somewhere else. Let's say, oh, I'm trying to think, the Giants. Let's say the Jets were worse. They would probably stick and pick at Marvin Harrison Jr. Like, there's teams that will – I'm just trying to think off the bat. Like, if teams had – oh, if the Panthers were the third worst team and had – their own pick, they would have picked Marvin Harrison Jr. If the second, they would maybe pick Marvin Harrison Jr. Um, so things like that are um, little interesting facts that we can look at that Marvin Harrison Jr. probably could go up with the talent-wise, um, but sticking at four. Now, here at five, and out of all of these teams, this number five makes the most sense to trade back if you're the Chargers. And even though Malik Neighbors on the board at five, I think knowing the Chargers and knowing their offense coordinator and their new coach, running's a big thing in their game. Does that happen and does that work out again? Probably not. 
they're still going to use, you know, Justin Herbert. Um, but for these th- top four, they get needs that they need to address immediately. QB, QB, QB. The wide receiver room is Michael Wilson, and that's basically it. Um, now for the Chargers, their wide receiver room is Quentin Johnson, Joshua Palmer for like one season, and I think the third wide receiver is somebody that's like a return man. So after that, do they go Malik Neighbors? And I would, I'm going to say probably on draft night, we're probably going to see them stick and pick. But I'm not going to do that. That's not fun. So I am going to do a trade. And the trade, I'm going to pick a team and propose a trade. So I'm going to do the Chargers. Um, and they are going to be trading with the Minnesota Vikings. I see. I cannot see a world where the Vikings stick and pick at 11 or 23 or and don't trade up to get J.J. McCarthy or a QB. Um, because Sam Darnold is not it. Unless they truly just think that next year they can get a QB, whatever. Um, I think... I think because, but, okay, sorry, I'm saying, I think this is, I have to try and get it to accept, but I think I'm trading as the Chargers, so it doesn't matter, I'm just going to do this, but this is not actually what I think the trade is. The trade's probably going to be, like, 11, 23, and and future picks, but they have, like, no picks, so we'll have to see, Um, but if you're the Chargers, I'm just going to do this to show, to do it, Um, trade has been rejected, that is crazy, um, let me do it the other way around. But I do think if you're the Chargers, trading back does make sense. Like, it 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 100% makes sense in the future for you. It makes sense for uh, switching up your assets. If you have a player that maybe does not make sense at 5 and that you think you can get 11, it makes sense. Whatever it might be, for the Chargers, they're probably the most team out of this top five that will trade back. And when you're the, I already kind of spoiled it, but getting JJ McCarthy for the Vikings just makes more sense. Even though JJ McCarthy, a lot of people want to hate on, a lot of teams and scouts love him. And um, as somebody that is not a uh, NFL, I almost said NBA NFL scout, I cannot sit here and say that um, it doesn't make sense for that to happen. Um, but JJ McCarthy is someone that is loved, and I really do think that he gets selected in this top nine range because I think these two positions. Can also can you see my mouse? You can. Um, could be trading spots. Um, here at number six, um, Malik Neighbors is the only option for me. If you're the Giants and you don't get any of the QBs, you're not willing to trade up for it. Um, game Malik Neighbors isn't bad. I think having a good wide receiver that was needed for Daniel Jones is going to matter. And if Daniel Jones isn't your QB for the future, then you know what? At least you have a wide receiver there that is going to be established. Um, Malik Neighbors has said some stuff about the Giants, so saying that uh, I just need a guy that can throw me the ball well when asked about the Giants, and wasn't a good response at all, but it's okay. Up next, we're going to go Joe Alt to the Tynes. Um, Tynes have in head coach in uh, Callahan, one of the better offensive tackle and O lineman um, coaches out there. Um, so getting Joe Alt, who is going to be an amazing player, does amazing on tape, is amazing all around, tests amazing. He's going to be someone here. I think that out of all the picks here, the most lockable picks are Caleb uh, Williams, of course. But let's just go from four to seven. I think Joe Alt is actually the most lockable pick, unless the Chargers take a big turn and pick Joe Alt. Um, here at number eight... I could see a world where the Falcons trade down, but I also, because I've heard rumors that they don't like Dallas Turner, but I do think Dallas Turner is still a good pick. He is my number one defensive player off the board. I think just the edge style play did very good at Alabama, had his own when Will Anderson Jr. was next to him um, two years ago. I think he is definitely worth it and definitely worth a top eight pick. Now here at number nine, again, things get interesting. It is hard for me to believe that the Bears are going to stay here at 9 when teams have probably called to trade up. Um, And it just makes sense for me to think of somebody is going to move up in front of the Jets before Roma Dunze falls. Or, you know, maybe the Bears do pick Roma Dunze and stick and pick. Um, I really... I really think the better chance of it and what's really going to happen is probably... It's probably going to be um, someone shoots up in front of the Bears and takes Roma Dunze. Now, you look at the teams throughout this first round. Whose teams I could do that? Jags? Already proposed that. Um, I think Saints could be a pick. I don't know about the Colts. I think Steelers could be a pick. Um, I think Chargers could try and trade up again to go. 
which is another scenario I actually really like not talking about that. Um, I actually really like that. No, 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 I'm not going to do it. Um, who else? Whatever. I am going to do something that I hope happens in the draft. I, this would be some insanity and top tier Jets hating. Um, I'm going to be, I guess, uh, the Bears in here. Or actually, hold on. I'm going to be, yeah, the Bears. And I am going to trade with the Buffalo Bills. I really think there's a world that the Buffalo Bills trade up. Von Miller has hinted on it. Um, some other people have hinted on it. They are looking at uh, the draft to uh, have their wide receiver options. And it's probably going to include some of these picks, which they include this pick. That's their next pick up um, while also having these two picks. Um, they can include some picks for next year. And the reason why I really, really like the Bills for this is that they have some capital for next year where they can add a second for next year, add something else, where now the Bears have great amount of picks for next year and have great capability to use that in a trade for Caleb Williams and find out what's the needs that you need if you're Caleb Williams. Um, whatever it might be, I do think that with all of these extra picks and, you know, they only have four picks in this draft, the Bills have you know, the picks to do this. And I think it does make sense. Um, and I'm going to propose this trade and the trade was accepted. Okay. So bills at nine or spoiled it. Roman Dunze top tier jets hating. If you're, um, the bills, especially going. And this is why I think this could be a big, big option is if the bills are looking at the jets and they say, okay, we just lost all of these defensive players. We just lost. Uh, we had horrible times of corner last season. We don't have any wide receivers. What can we do that can get a dynamic player that we need that can help us on the offensive side of the ball that and not allow players to have a defensive uh, or an offensive, um, um, not offensive help, but offensive uh, jump in front of us. They get this trade right before the Jets. It will, I will cry of laughter on draft night. That would be hilarious. And now you're the Jets. You don't know what to do. They've already talked about, you know, if Aaron Wanders wants Brock Bowers, they'll go Brock Bowers. They've already talked about, you know, O-Lyman's also here. And, you know, when you really look at the Jets, I think the biggest option with Mike Williams um, now being there is Fuaga from uh, Oregon State. He's a versatile offensive lineman. I think that is a fine pickup for him. Um, and the Jets do need offensive tackles. You do get someone off your board. But I could see a world where they get Brock Bowers if they do want to go with the offensive side of the ball still, uh, receiving-wise. Um, but I do think the Jets still do a good enough pick there. Speaking of Chargers at 11, I think Brock Bowers is cr a crazy enough prospect that the Chargers would be happy that they traded back and still got Brock Bowers because I think there is a world where they could have picked him at 5 if uh, – if he would have tested a little bit better. Brock Bowers, though, at 11, works well. I really do think that the Chargers would like Brock Bowers if they are thinking about maybe more of a running ball with also having some passing upside. Brock Bowers is someone that can block and someone that can receive it very well. Kyle Pitts was called one of the best tight end prospects ever. Brock Bowers is the most complete tight end prospect ever. Um, and I think it just works out tremendously for them. At number 12 for the uh, Broncos, this is where it starts getting more defensive side of the ball into more whatever. I have my thing over here. Did I do everything correctly? I did do everything correctly. Okay. At number 12, we're going to go Jared Verse. Um, I like Verse. I've seen a lot of people think that he could be edge one. I, in the beginning of the season, thought he would for sure be edge number one and up here. Um, I still think that he has the talent to be up there, but... Didn't play that well statistically. Jared Verse is going here to the Broncos. I could see a world where the Bron uh, Broncos trade down, um, but we're not going to do that. Up next here, at number 13 with the Raiders, I want to throw out a crazy trade. I have a crazy trade in mind with the Raiders. Um, with the Raiders, you see how the board fell. Tackle off the board, another tackle off the board. Maybe you're looking at uh, Olu Fashionu now, not Fashanu, Fashionu. Um, looking at other people, you know, like that's good, but you know, don't really want it. Maybe you're thinking about Michael Penix and that's your actual goal at the end of the day is Michael Penix Jr. And you're thinking about potentially picking him here. Do you stick and pick cause you don't want any other team to pick him and someone trade up when you look at the other teams though, do you think that someone could pick him in, let's say from 27 and whatever, 
I don't think you do. So I think you listen to some trade offers about potentially trading down. And the one trade that I want to throw out there is the Raiders trading with the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, the Philadelphia Eagles, and this this will probably be since it's only like a it's a nine pick jump that is tall. Um, it's going to be probably just a, like a later pick because um, this is for not a QB. Uh, spoiler, if you really thought this was a QB, yikes. Um, I think that when you're the Eagles, and I think their main main thing is corner. I think that's the biggest thing they need to help with. Help with. Um, when you're looking at the board and you're seeing the teams that could select corner, you could have the Colts, the Jags, uh, maybe the Steelers. There's some teams that can jump on some corners that you could screw yourself over with. So the Eagles jumping in front of some of these teams right here, I would not be disappointed if they jump up. And I do think that there is a world where, you know, it is hard to say is Quinion, Quinion Mitchell or Terry and Arnold are uh, uh, corner one. For me, I'm going to still go Terry and Arnold. Um, SEC uh, player for the Eagles, which is always a thing. Um, it's just very interesting to see what they would do. I do think Terry and Arnold is a dynamic player, played very well. Um, and I think he's honestly worth the number uh, 13th pick if you're trying to reach for a corner. And I think if you're the Eagles, you would be fine doing this. At number 14, we have the Saints. I'm going to go with an O-lineman clearly needs it um olu fashanu is a great pickup for me um i can honestly see him higher up i would not be shocked if the Chargers choose him at 11 um but getting him at 14 is another great pick um here for the colts talking about teams that could go corner we have the colts here and they're going to go corner they're going to get whatever the second best corner here quinion mitchell which arguably could be the first best corner corner great just you know tangibles where he's having length, he's having ability to run the ball, ability to snag, whatever it might be. Quinion Mitchell is um, very, very perfect, and I think would be um, a good pickup for the Colts. When you're think when you're the Colts, you're probably thinking, um, "Hey, there's going to be some dynamic players in our uh, division here soon." You have the Jags wide receiving core, um, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, you have um, the Texans wide receiver core. You have the Titans wide receiver core. All cores that are starting to build on their offensive side of the ball. And I think Quinion Mitchell would be a pickup that could help you for the future. Next, we go with Seattle. And it's almost perfect that he fell here. Uh, Troy uh, Fatanu. Um, coming back to Seattle. Um, went to college at University of Washington, which is in Seattle. Um, I think... <coughs> I'd be shocked if Seattle goes anything other than oh, offensive lineman or anything just on the O-line. Um, I could see a world where it's defensive line, but I really think it's more offensive line. Um, and Troy Fatanu is going to be someone that's a plug-in player. At number 17, this is what I want to talk about. When you're the Jags and you see that um, Terry Arnold and Quinion Mitchell are out, and I think there is a drop off a little bit of Nate Wiggins. I've seen a lot of people from my last mock draft. I really like Nate Wiggins. I thought he should be our uh, corner one. But a lot of people have talked about that injury and talked about some other flaws with him. He's kind of fallen off some boards. Are you willing to shoot up and take Nate Wiggins? I don't think you are. And with that, I think you're going to choose Brian Thomas Jr. Help with the wide receiver core a little bit. Um, you have right now, what, Gabe Davis, um... Christian Kirk, Brian Thomas Jr. will add a great wide receiver that I think could be your future wide receiver one. I've mocked this before, and I really do genuinely think that this is something that should be in play. Here for the Bengals, I was originally going to go O-line. It doesn't really make sense anymore. I could see D-tackle for them. Um, what I choose for them? Oh, I see what I choose for them. But it just, I don't know. I don't feel like 100% good with it, you know? Like, I don't feel like it makes 100% sense. Um, and for that reason, wait. Oh, no, no, okay. I read something and it said something else. Um, I've been kind of also making some edits. Originally, Quinion Mitchell was higher up a little bit. Um, Jared Verse was higher up a little bit. Um, I'm making edits a while ago. Uh, kind of trying to have a real mock draft where things change immediately. Um, 18 for the Bengals. What would I do? I would probably go uh, Johnny and Newton. 
Um, having defensive linemen is going to be good. Lost a big defensive lineman in the offseason. Makes sense for the Bengals to go defensive after they had some good uh, offensive lineman signings. I don't see a world where they go O-line unless it's interior, but I do think that they should booster up the defense a little bit. Here for the Rams, um, speaking of D-linemen, I think Brian t- uh, Bron- Byron Murphy the second. I don't know why I couldn't say that. It's another person that I think is going to go around this range. Hasn't has sneakily just been jumping up draft boards this whole draft process. Um, I think no matter what, Rams are going to be looking at a Aaron Donald replacement, but not someone like Aaron Donald. I think it's just somebody that is going to be able to help an Aaron Donald uh, in uh, go- leaving heel like oh, the wound heel. Um, Makes sense for me to pick them, but yeah, it's hard to say what, what the Rams could do because I honestly see a world where they trade back and trade out of the first round because Rams have not had a first round in so, so long and they might have the same thing, um, but we'll see what happens. Up um, next at 20, we have the Pittsburgh Steelers, and for the Steelers, I went a player that I am super high on still, Amari, uh, Marius Mims. Um had an injury this whole season, but test so, so well. And I think just the capability of being that guy for the him for them makes sense for me. I think he is somebody that blocks very well, very powerful, makes sense as a Steelers player at 21 for the Dolphins. Um, a guy that is all the way here at 30, Jackson Powers Johnson, had a very good outing um, during the whole, uh, um, what is it called? During the whole uh, combine, um, somebody that has r- rose in boards, risen, rose, um, in a, for a, a long time now, um, makes sense for the Dolphins to go like anterior O-linemen. I feel like Dolphins have always been trying to um, bolster their own line, and it's just sometimes it's never happened, never worked, and luckily now that it will work, I think with a Jackson Powers Johnson being there, this could be... Um, somebody that just fits in in the guard position. At 22, we had a trade with the Eagles for the Raiders. Trade back, and we talked about it a little earlier, Michael Pence Jr., who is looking like he's going to be a locked first-round draft pick. Um, I'll be very interested to see if that is true. Um, but I do think that a team is going to trade back, uh, trade into the first round to either get Bo Nix or Michael Pinks Jr. for now. Michael Pinks Jr. is the pick here for the uh, Las Vegas Raiders. I think Michael Pinks might need some time, honestly, and having Garner Minshew there does make sense to have that for him. Um, but I think it will work out for them in the long run. At number 23, we have the Chargers. Um, I am going to go J.C. Latham. I originally had uh, Graham Barton, who was somebody that was um, flexible, that could be in multiple positions. But I, J.C. Latham is just falling in this board, and I don't think he falls this much. He is somebody that is a very excellent player, and he deserves to be picked here at 23. I think even earlier, honestly, um, offensive line is probably what the Chargers are going to be looking at. They could have looked at it at five and get Joe Alt, but now you just trade it back. You get Brock Bowers and JC Latham and help that offense even more than uh, when it's needed to. Um, at 24, I'm going to go Tyler Guyon, a popular pick, honestly, for the Cowboys. Tyler Guyon has all the tools to become a Pro Bowl uh, offensive tackle. He is somebody that, you know, Oklahoma makes some dogs when it comes to O linemen. Um, look at Creed Humphrey. Look at Lane Johnson. Look at um, Trent Williams. Like they know how to make their own linemen. Tyler Guyon's a pick here for me, and it makes sense uh, for the Cowboys to get him after losing out on uh, an offensive lineman in O tackle. Uh, at number twenty-five, I think the Packers are going to go defense. You can already see corner is a big thing, and I am going to stop the fall of Nate Wiggins here. Um, the speed, one of the fastest guys when it came to the 4A times. Nate Wiggins is an elite guy that is going to do well for Clemson or uh, for the Packers and did very well at Clemson. Um, and for the Packers, I like Nate Wiggins here. I could see a world where they trade back because linebacker is the huge, biggest thing for them. Um, but here at 25, fits in perfectly. At number 26, we have the Tampa Bay uh, Buccaneers. And I was going to go Chop Robinson. Do 
do I want to? Guys, this is hard. Leatu Latu is falling. There's teams have flagged him for medical reasons. I'm going to choose Chop Robinson. Somebody that ha was a excellent leader at Penn State. Someone that played very well. Someone that was a very great player off the edge. Plays a little bit like Micah Parsons. Ain't going to lie. Penn State um, teammate. Or not, were they? I don't think they were teammates. But I do think that Penn State um, brotherins um, being both from Penn State. Um, and I'm going to stop the fall of of uh, Leatu Latu with the Cardinals. Cardinals having a great pick. It's crazy to think if the Cardinals would trade back, they would prop with the Vikings. They would have three first round picks in this draft, which is just insanity to think of. Leatu Latu is somebody that medically retired and came back to um, NFL or the college football scene, played very well, earned his right to become a great uh, first rounder. Um, definitely somebody that has all the talent, but it's just the medically retired things that scares you. Um, Leatu Latu is a great pickup though for the Cardinals. I think that needs help on the defensive side. Bears here at 28. <sighs> I think honestly here for Bears, I had Johnny Newton falling, but I don't think that makes sense. I don't think that makes sense. I think what I'm going to do here is <sighs> dang and the edge doesn't fall. It's hard to see what could happen here. I do think that if this this was a case scenario where they do need to stick and pick, Graham Barn does make the most sense. Um, I also think that... Hmm, that is actually a good option. I do think that this is a chance that a team does trade up to get a, a Donay Mitchell who's been falling. I said a donut eh? out of nine. Oh, it's so hard. What should I do? I do think that there is a chance that when you look at the teams here, let's just go. If you look at the teams here, I think out of all the teams here, who would trade up to quickly get this wide receiver? I think the Panthers. I think there's a chance that the mm, the Ravens wouldn't trade up. I think, hmm, 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 hmm. I think the Patriots could trade up. I think that's a big one that could trade up. Mm, and I'm kind of liking it when I say it. I'm really liking it. Do the Jets trade up? Do the Jets trade up and get Adonai Mitchell? Hmm. These are some good options. I am going to do this. I think they fully go with their assets. They trade 28 for 34. They could honestly get an edge where you could probably get or an offen offensive tackle. You'll probably they'll probably have to like give like that. I'm just gonna do this. Kill me down in the comments if you hate this. I think this is what I'm thinking. I think Darius Robinson is someone that could they could pick up. Um in the second round. Makes sense for the Bears to go get the edge that they were needing. And now with the Patriots kind of trading up. The Patriots, which I don't think we're, we're going to see. I just want to throw this out there. Adonai Mitchell going to the Patriots. I kind of like that. Their wide receiver room is not that amazing. Um, wide receiver one right now. Not Demario Douglas. <sighs> not Juju. Devontae Parker left. Who's their wide receiver one right now? Why am I blanking out? Um, Oh, wait, I think it's Kendrick Bourne. Which that should not. That should show you right there that... They just need to get a wide receiver. Could they? Could this also be an option where they wait and instead they get a Lad McConkey in the second round? Keon Coleman, yeah. But I'm gonna choose this for them. I think it just does not make sense for the Bears to stay there at 28, which maybe doesn't make sense for the Bears to go at nine trade up. Um, but whatever. It might, I think the Bears could trade up. Actually, sorry, trade down. Tra I think the Bears could trade up. But here at 29. We're going to have the Lions. Uh, Cooper DeGene is the pick here. Uh, versatile player who plays safety and corner. I think the Lions would need that, especially when their secondary has been so banged up. Um, and it just makes sense to bring in some players that can help in that secondary that lost some players too. Ravens here at 30. Um, Adonai Mitchell could have been the pickup for them, but him leaving hurts. I do think that 
this is the stop of Graham Barn falling. Um, guy that can play all the O line, honestly. Very good offensive line player. Uh, makes sense for him to be in this position. Ravens, people left. People left them horribly. People have also uh, getting older. Got to find some replacements for him. Makes sense here. Um, I am going to also pick uh, Kool-Aid McKinstry here for the 49ers. I think corner is something that they can booster. Uh, booster. It's the 49ers. They feel like, you feel like they have every single position. This could also be a potential... Hmm, that's another thing to throw out here. Could the 49ers find a, a Brian Ayuk replacement in the draft? We'll see. Um, but Kool-Aid McKinstry is the pick for me. I still like Kool-Aid. Somebody that I had up here at the beginning of the year and now has fallen due to injury, due to um, some plays, whatever it might be. At 32, and I've seen a lot of people now recently say that it just does not make sense for them to go here and pick this player. But I still can't believe they wouldn't do this. If Xavier Worthy is still on the board at 32, I think 32 is the pick for um, the Kansas City Chiefs. It just just does not make sense to me that if they are on the board that you would pick uh, not pick him. Um, but yeah, other than that, I hope you guys enjoy. Um, very fun for this mock draft. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. And other than that, I hope you guys enjoy. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.